Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. We've been looking at one book of the Bible every single day, 66 books total, and today we're starting the New Testament. Hey, right? we've been in the Old Testament up until now. Look at all of our Old Testament books, 39 books that we went through together. And from the very beginning, we were introduced that God loves his people and he has a plan for his people. And in our first category, the Pentateuch, we're introduced to the people of Israel, right? Through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and on and on and on. We see that even though sin entered the garden, and from the very beginning, God has had a plan because he loves us. He has a plan to stop the serpent, Satan, to have victory over the enemy, to rescue or save you and me because he loves us so much. And so then in the historical books, we saw how the nation of Israel then became the kingdom of Israel. And they had times when they were so close to God but then they had times where their worship, their attention of their heart was somewhere else. But always God was going, I'm here for you. I love you. I want to save you. We see declarations of that love in our wisdom and poetry books. When we think about Psalms, or when we think about Ecclesiastes or Proverbs, these amazing moments where we're pouring out our feelings to a God who knows those feelings because he created them. And that's a picture of God's heart. He wants that friendship, that relationship with you and me. Then we hit the major prophets and the minor prophets. All of these prophets were just split on if their book was longer or shorter, but they were God's messengers. They were God's messengers after the kingdom of Israel split into Israel and Judah. And these messengers worked to say, hey, bring your heart's attention back to God. Reject the lies of the enemy. Listen to God. And those messengers also pointed forward to a day when someone was coming, someone from the line of David, from the tribe of Judah, someone who would sit on the throne, someone who would be the Messiah. And then Malachi ends and 400 years go by before the New Testament. The book of Matthew picks up when Jesus enters the scene. So our new category of books, our first category in the New Testament is the Gospels. The Gospels. And the Gospel, what does that word mean? Good news. The Gospel is such good news. And the Gospel of Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. So let's work on finding that together. Whether you open your Bible to the middle and find Psalms and flip forward, or you open your Bible to the back and flip forward, work on finding Matthew. Now, Matthew's book has over 60 references where he quotes the Old Testament. Because Matthew, who was one of the disciples of Jesus, he was that tax collector, right? Who became a follower of Jesus, who said, Jesus, I'm giving you the attention of my heart. Matthew in his book wanted all of Israel, all of the Jews to know that Jesus was the one they were looking for. He was their Messiah. And so he would quote the prophets. He would quote Deuteronomy and the Pentateuch. He would quote all of these books connecting the Old Testament to the New Testament. Because like we've seen, the Bible is one big love story of God's love for us. It is the Bible, not we don't say, oh, well, I believe in this part, or I believe in this part, or I like Jesus, but I don't really understand God. No, 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 no. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And we have seen through the Old Testament God's amazing love for us. And now we get to see it on display in the person of Jesus. So turn in your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 4. <coughs> Excuse me, Matthew chapter 4. Jesus has been born. He has uh, grown up. John the Baptist has baptized Jesus. The sky opened up and the Father God said in a loud voice as the Spirit descended like a dove, 
this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I find joy in him. That amazing moment where we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what we call the Trinity, right? They were all present in that moment when Jesus begins his ministry. And it grounded Jesus in his identity of who he is. Who was Jesus? He is the Son of God. And he found favor. He brought God joy in whom God was well pleased. And those words ring true for us today, right? We are children of God in whom he is well pleased. And that was Jesus's identity grounded from the very beginning to then go into his ministry. And then he goes into the wilderness and is tempted by the enemy. But because Jesus knows who he is, a child of God, and in whom the Father God is well pleased, he is able to reject the lies of the enemy. He does not fall to Satan's temptations. And now we're going to pick up the story in chapter 12. Jesus comes back from being tempted into the, in the wilderness and he gets to work. So Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. Chapter 4 verse 12. Pause the video if you need a little bit more time to find it. But it says here, Jesus heard that John, John the Baptist, had been put in prison. So Jesus went back to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went and lived in Capernaum, a town near Lake Galilee. Capernaum is in the area near Zebulon and Naphtali. Jesus did this to make true what the prophet Isaiah said, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali are on the way to the sea. They are along the Jordan River. This is Galilee where the non-Jewish people live. These people who live in darkness will see a great light. They live in a place that is very dark, but a light will shine on them. Isaiah 9, 1 to 2. So here, Matthew is connecting it back to the Old Testament. He's connecting the dots. And we've talked about how the Israelites were chosen as God's people to be a blessing to all the nations, right? God wanted to use them to bless and reach others with his amazing love. And we see here in verse 16, the people on the outside, right? The non-Jewish people out there in Galilee where Jesus is headed. They're saying that's the people who live in darkness. But a light is coming because Jesus is the perfect light that casts out the darkness of the enemy. The enemy has to flee when Jesus enters the room. So let's see what it says here in verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach saying, change your hearts and lives. Maybe your Bible says, repent because the kingdom of heaven is coming soon. Jesus was walking by Lake Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Simon's brother, Andrew. The brothers were fishermen and they were fishing in the lake with a net. Jesus said, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. At once, Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed him. Jesus continued walking by Lake Galilee. He saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets to catch fish. Jesus told them to come with him. And at once, they left the boat and their father and they followed Jesus. Jesus went everywhere in Galilee. He taught in the synagogues and preached the good news, the gospel about the kingdom of heaven. And he healed all the people's diseases and sicknesses. The news about Jesus spread all over Syria and people brought all the sick to him. These sick people were suffering from different kinds of diseases and pains. Some were suffering very great pain. Some had demons, some were epileptics and some were paralyzed. Jesus healed them all. Many people followed him. They came from Galilee and the ten towns, Jerusalem, Judea, and the land across the Jordan River. So there is Jesus beginning his ministry. And our takeaway verse is verse 17, where Jesus says, From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, what does it mean to repent? You heard that word in church? Some versions might say, change your life. You know, if we looked at the Greek, repent means to change your mind, 
to change your mind, to be so convicted about something, something convinces you so much that your mind is changed. And because your mind is changed, your heart, your life, your everything is changed as a result. And so I think about that because sometimes we hear the word repent or we hear, or we memorize a Bible verse in Sabbath school where we have to repent or confess our sins or all these different things. It's changing our mind. All along, we've been saying that the enemy, he likes to attack us with lies, lies that we're not good enough to be a follower of Jesus, lies that if you were just smarter, if you were just stronger, if you were just prettier, if you were just this, oh, you're not good enough at that. Oh, you're no good. Oh, you're lie after lie after lie. But we start to believe those lies because we live in a broken, sinful world. But it's a lie. Who does Jesus say that we are? His beloved children. God says, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. God loves us so much. We've seen that all through the Old Testament, how loved we are. The characteristics of God where he says, I am slow to anger. I am rich in mercy. I have faithful love. I don't want to punish. I want to forgive. We've seen this over and over. God saying, don't Listen to those lies. Don't let that darkness enter in. Repent. Reject the lies of the enemy. Change your mind and change your life by believing who I say you am. And when God looks at us, he goes, you are more than enough because I made you. You are smart enough because I made you that way. You are pretty enough and strong enough, and talented enough, and on and on and on, God says, you are perfect. You are my child. You are a son and a daughter of God, and he loves you so much. And so when Jesus goes about his ministry saying he started preaching, repent, he was telling people, change your mind, Change and reject those lies that the enemy has been convincing you of for so long. Turn your heart to me. Turn your heart to me and understand who we say you are. And that is a beloved child. Then our verse says, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. What's the kingdom of heaven? Well, the kingdom... Gosh, that's a, that's a person and a place, isn't it? The kingdom ultimately is God's kingdom, and we know that that is here in his people. Someday, someday soon, it feels far off, but it's always going to be soon. The new Jerusalem will come down, and God's kingdom will be in the new heaven and the new earth. But Jesus talked a lot about how the kingdom of heaven has come and is near. And I think about how God's kingdom, from the very beginning all the way through, God wants to be close to us. He wants to be near to you and me because he wants a relationship with us. And Jesus is saying that. He's saying, hey, repent. Change your mind about the way you think. Reject what the enemy's got you convinced on. Change your mind and listen to who I say that you are. And that is that you are precious and holy and righteous and beautiful change your mind and realize that the kingdom of heaven has come near. God has come near, literally near in the person of Jesus because Jesus was God and he was near to the people, touching them, healing them, healing not only their outward things, but healing their hearts, calling his disciples, come follow me. I want us to fish for people. I got to be near to the people how God has always been. Remember in the Old Testament, God goes, I can live in a tent. I don't need fancy this or fancy that because ultimately he wants to live in our hearts. And Jesus through his entire ministry gives us a beautiful picture of who God is. A picture of a God who lives in our hearts through the Holy Spirit and says, hey, I'm going to use you to be my hands and feet in the world around you. I want to fill you with my love so you overflow with that love for others. And so 
Matthew brings us into the New Testament. He keeps connecting it to the Old Testament saying, this is what it's always been all about. And now Jesus is here and he's turning the world upside down. And that starts by us repenting, changing our mind and saying, you know what I know, something serpent Satan, you're stomped. You're done for. I'm not going to believe the lies that you're saying about me. I'm changing my mind to believe what God says about me instead. Let's say a prayer and close our time together. Dear God, we're so thankful that when you look at us, you say, oh, there is my beloved child, my son, my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. They bring me so much joy. You love us that much. And you show that love in a very real way in the life of Jesus. We're so thankful that you sent Jesus for us to defeat the serpent Satan once and for all. And we look forward to seeing Jesus again someday and all being in your kingdom together forever. We thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right, there's some discussion questions in the video description below if you want to dive a little bit deeper into your reflection on the book of Matthew. So much, and we only have so little time, but we've got to see book to book to book the big picture of the Bible. And our takeaway verse for the Gospel of Matthew is Matthew 4, 17. From then on, Jesus began to preach, repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of heaven has come near. All right, well, let's see what Jesus is up to when it comes to our next gospel tomorrow, and I will see you then.